Okay, so approach reading a CBC. So this is what you get in the clinic at CBC. And believe me, you can get a lot of information just from a CBC. But if you know how to, to interpret each parameter in relation to the anemia and of course the clinical history, it would be wonderful if you have like a smear to supplement your diagnosis. To start with, what is an RBC count? Usually RBC count is measured by an automated machine. So, um, so what we get with, it's not a calculation but automation. And remember the RBCs, the, R, the main function is to carry uh, oxygen into the tissues and turn carbon monoxide to the lungs. So in a male, we have a cutoff point between 4.6 to 6, and a female, 4.1 to 5.4. The hemoglobin, it measures how much we have a counted hemoglobin in our body. So uh, usually, uh, it is, again, automated machines. And the uh, principle is to, to use the light to measure uh, how much uh, hemoglobin that we have. So what they do, they take the uh, uh, blood and they light the RBCs and they, they, they measure how much light would pass through the blood. So in, uh, in males, the normal level between 14 to 18 gram per deciliter and females between 12 to 16 gram per deciliter. And because hemoglobin is measured spectrophotometrically, I mean by light, there are some conditions which can have full positive elevation of our hemoglobin. For a patient having hyperlipidemia, or a patient having paraproteins, for example, like in multiple myeloma. And uh, if we have a lot of nuclear cells, these will, affect, will be affected inside the machine. So they give us false elevation of hemoglobin. The hematocrit is, uh, the, is the percentage of blood volume occupied by the RBCs. So if we take a, a tube and we centrifuge the blood, we'd have a separation of different layers. So we have uh, the plasma, white cell, and the red cell layer down. So whatever we have the proportion to the whole blood, this is what we call the hematocrit. And usually this is a calculated value. So we don't get it by the machine, it's calculated by the machine. So hematocrit, it means uh, MCV multiplied by the RBC number. So in a male, 40 to 50% is uh, the normal value. Female, 37 to 47% uh, is the cutoff, normal cutoff value for female. The MCV, it's usually it means the size of the red cell. So if we have no MCV, we have uh, uh, we have a smaller cell in, in relation to the size of the uh, lymphocyte in nucleus. Um, and the normal reference range is between 80 to 100, and again, it is a calculated value. So uh, MCV equals hematocrit over the total RBC count. But again, because of the, uh, sometimes you have false elevation of the MCV. For example, if we have patient with cold agglutinins, what happens is called agglutinin will clump the RBCs. So if they clump the RBCs by a machine, it will be uh, considered like one RBC, so we have higher elevation of the MCV. If we have a patient hemolyzing and we have a lot of retics, for example, reticulocytes. The reticulocytes are early RBC, they have larger size than the normal RBCs, so we have higher elevation of the MCV. And of course, patients with hyperglycemia, hypernatremia can have high uh, false elevation of their MCV as well. Uh, the MCH is also the surrogate of the uh, MCV. It measures the average amount of hemoglobin per cell. And it is uh, the normal reference between 27 to 31. It is calculated as uh, the hemoglobin level over the RBC count. The MCHC uh, basically it tells us uh, the degree of stain of the red cell, what we call the uh, hypochromia or hyperchromia. Usually it's not very um, helpful in, uh, as a CPC parameter. Uh, may, maybe it is more uh, towards a monitoring for the labs for the quality control, but we can see an increase in some situations like uh, hereditary cytosis where we can see increase in the MCHC, the normal value between 32 and 36, 
Um, it is also increased in condition where we have uh, uh, agglutination of the RBCs and called agglutin disease. And it is calculated like uh, uh, hemoglobin over the hematocrit multiplied by 100. RDW is the red cell distribution width. So it measures how much discrepancy between we have between the shapes and sizes of the uh, red, cell, red cells. So the normal value between 11.5 uh, to 14.5. And if we have increased RW, that means we have probably a mixed population of the red cells. And it is calculated as standard deviation MCV over the uh, of the MCV of the general population multiplied by 100. So these are two smears just to show what I mean by the high RDW and low R, uh, the normal RDW. Uh, on the on the the right, we have the patient with iron deficiency anemia. You can see how the shapes and sizes really differ. That's why we have a wider R, uh, RDW red cell distribution width. On the left, this is a patient with thalassemia trait, and you can see how uniformly looking at the RBCs. So the RDW would be normal in these patients. The reticular side counts give you a very good indication of how is the function of your bone marrow. Is the bone marrow functioning or not? Uh, also, the, it gives you, a f it's not also only indication of hemolysis, but also indication of activity of the bone marrow. So the normal range between 0.5 to 2.5 percent, and um, it is reported um, as um, a percentage. And remember that it should be corrected to the degree of anemia. So um, it should not be interpreted only by the number. So we have a, a formula for interpreting the uh, degree of anemia, what we call uh, the uh, reticular site production index. So in uh, these patients, they have the newly uh, formed uh, um, RBCs. So probably if, uh, if, uh, if, uh, if we um, estimate it to the degree of anemia, there would be uh, underestimation. So we have corrected to the degree of anemia. So, for example, if uh, uh, in the reticular site prediction index, it takes into account uh, the uh, reticular site survivals in terms of the hematocrit. So that's why it corrects for the anemia. So, so anemia, so exaggeration will test the. An anemia would be exaggerate. For example, if you have, for example, a patient with. Uh, uh, are deficiency anemia, like hemoglobin of nine, and the retix uh, percentage is uh, two point five percent. This is not proper. If we correct it to the degree of anemia, and measuring the retic side prediction index would be low. So if you have any index less than two, it means the bone marrow is not active. It is a lazy bone marrow. Okay. If we have more than two, most of probably the patient is destroying the, his RBC uh, outside rather than it is a bone marrow problem. So we already talked about the definition of anemia and we said women less than 12, men less than 13.5 and pregnant women less than 11. And putting all the picture together, how we can interpret the reticular side count in terms of the causes of anemia? So if we have a reticular count less than 100, I mean that this is uh, the absolute reticular site count, and an index less than 2%, as I told you, that I showed you the formula, the less than 2% means that the bone marrow is not actively producing the red cells. So what condition can give you reticular site production index less than 2%? In, uh, in uh, any conditions where we have hematinic deficiency, for example, we have iron deficiency anemia, uh, uh, if we have folate, B12, or we have maturation problems, anemia of renal disease because we have less of erythropoietin to stimulate the bone marrow to produce uh, the red cells, anemia of chronic inflammation, the iron is, um, uh, uh, is trapped inside the bone marrow so we don't have production of the red cells. Whereas if we have reticular side production index or reticular more than 2%, it means we have an active bone marrow trying to compensate for the anemia. 
So if in, in, in conditions like hemolytic anemias, hemoglobin apathies, membrane defects, autoimmunohemolytic anemia, we'd have a right, uh, high risk site prediction index. Uh, how we can interpret the, uh, uh, the MCV in relation to the RDW? If we have a normal RDW and low MCV, what are the possibilities? Either it is thalassemia trait or it is uh, anemia of chronic disease. If we have a low MCV with high RDW, one of the possibilities is that we have iron deficiency anemia. Uh, sickle beta thalassemia because sickle cells they are different from the microcytic cells, so they, they give discrepancy and two cell population in, inside your smear. And of course, thalassemia, for example, if they have uh, acute hemolysis or if they have concomitant iron deficiency anemia, they can give you high RDW. Normal RDW in relation to the normal MCV, we would have acute blood loss and inflammation. Renal disease as the cause of normal to both. High RDW with normal MCV, early iron deficiency anemia. So we can have a patient uh, with, uh, uh, with uh, I mean, normal MCV, especially if it did not reach the uh, a, a stage of uh, severe uh, iron anemia. Or we can have early B12 deficiencies, again, give you normal MCV. Um, uh, high RDW with normal MCV, also early folate deficiency, sickle cell anemia, can give you all of that. If we have normal RDW with high MCV, again, we think like aplastic anemia, chronic liver disease, uh, various medications can give you a normal RDW with high MCV, but we have, if we have high RDW with high MCV, think of the B12. Because B12 folate deficiency give you like teardrop cells, uh, macro ovalo size, that's, we, that's why you have high RDW. And of course, if you have high RDW with MCV, immune hemolysis would be uh, another cause because of an increased reticulocyte uh, uh, production. That's why you have an increase in the RDW in, uh, in your blood cell. So this is a general approach to um, how to diagnose uh, anemia in terms of uh, the MCV. Uh, so we have, if you have um, an MCV, of course, after evaluation the cause of anemia, if you have MCV low less than 80, we do the iron studies. So if the iron study consists of iron deficiency anemia, treat iron deficiency anemia. If the patient has low iron, normal to total iron binding capacity and normal to high ferritin, then this is anemia of chronic inflammation, as most of the time we should treat the underlying cause to treat the anemia. If we have uh, normal to high iron uh, and also normal to high ferritin, then look to other causes of uh, anemia. Either we have other causes like the, the ones abnormal to the vomer, for example, sideroblastic anemia, or the presence of hemoglobinopathies as well. What if we have normal MCV? Normal MCV, uh, we should examine, of course, the perfus uh, blood smear to rule out the cause of anemia. Uh, presence of hemolysis was acute hemolysis and should give you normal MCV. Uh, anemia with bone marrow suppression, uh, for example, anemia of inflammation can give you a normal MCV. Renal insufficiency gives you a normal MCV, anemia of renal disease. If we have high MCH more than 100, okay, so we think of megaloblastic and non-megaloblastic causes. The megaloblastic anemia, we're thinking like the B12 uh, deficiency and folate deficiency. The then megaloblastic, if we have conditions where it have uh, abnormal bone marrow, for example, mild dysplastic syndrome, can give you higher MCV than the usual. Other causes that can give you false elevation of the MCV increase in the reticulocyte counts. Liver disease can give you high MCV. A patient coming with uncontrolled hyperthyroidism also can give you high MCV. Okay, so platelets, uh, platelets uh, they bud off the megakaryocytes in the bone marrow. And if you notice the small dots in between the RBCs, these are uh, the platelets. And usually they are not nucleated. The half-life is between 7 to 10 days for uh, platelets. 
um, and first one to two days are spent in the spleen. They play a central role in the primary hemostasis and also they can play a role in inflammation. That's why we can have condition of increased platelet counts reactive to inflammatory state. So how do you assess platelet count? Usually look in the platelet number. Uh, the, the, uh, we're looking to the normal count between 150 to 450 and also the MPV, mean platelet volume. So with mean platelet volume, I'll talk about right now. So it is uh, the volume of the average circulating platelets in the peripheral circulation. Um, and the high MPV usually indicates that the uh, bone marrow is producing more platelets. So if we have peripheral dystrophy, for example, in, uh, immune thrombocytopenia, so we have peripheral uh, destruction in the periphery, periphery, so the bone marrow is producing more platelets and these are larger platelets. So it gives an indication of destruction. Low MPV, it indicates that the bone marrow is suppressed. For example, aplastic anemia. So what is the definition of thrombocytopenia? Any platelet count less than uh, 150, and you can categorize into mild, moderate, and severe. Mild is between 150 to 100, moderate between 99 to 50, and less than 50 is severe. So these are uh, some general causes from thrombocytopenia. We have what we call falsely low platelet count. How do you know falsely low platelet count? Uh, in the patient coming to you, with, with they don't have any symptoms of uh, anemia. And repeatedly you do the uh, platelets and they are low. Okay, and you take a history that they did, for example, surgery, they not bleeding, and they struck the tooth. For a female, she had the deliveries, no history of blood transfusion, think of false. How do you diagnose it? Should send for peripheral smear. So it tells us there are platelet clumps uh, as a cause of uh, thrombocytopenia. What we do in our hospital, uh, why we have thrombocytopenia, uh, the um, uh, pseudo clumps? Because it is EDTA uh, related thing. So in uh, the CBC tube, we have EDTA. There are some in vitro antibodies inside the tube that uh, attack the plate. That's how it causes clumping of the plate, but it's not inside the patient. So we, what we do, we send with the citrated tube. So citrated tube, they would get to correct it if it is pseudothrombocytopenia. The other indications are uh, uh, primary immune thrombocytopenia, ITP. And usually these patients, they don't have any um, uh, abnormalities in the CBC other than the platelets. The, uh, they come with a history of uh, bruising, epistaxis, uh, uh, mouth uh, uh, bleed. Uh, drug induced, we have a list of many drugs that can cause thrombocytopenia, but it's one of the causes of thrombocytopenia. And infections, of course, one of the causes. Um, uh, viral infections can cause, uh, can give you thrombocytopenia, mild thrombocytopenia. Uh, hepatitis, especially hepatitis C, because there's an immune element with hepatitis C. Um, Hypersmenism in patient chronic liver disease. So patient with chronic liver disease, they have larger spleen. What happens is that the spleen has increased function. So more, more of the plates are sequestered in the spleen, and usually the cut of, the cut of blood does not go below 60 for these patients, platelets. Uh, patient, of course, nutrition deficiency B12, and we see uh, lots of patients in our hospital with coming with thrombocytopenia, and B12 is a cause for the thrombocytopenia. Uh, patient with connective tissue disease and vasculitis, especially if it was an active disease, uh, it caused thrombocytopenia because there's an immune element uh, to it. And pregnancy, pregnancy, uh, there are multiple causes, either because gestational thrombocytopenia, and usually you see it in the second to third trimester. And uh, usually they don't have any history of bleeding, uh, and before their platelet count were normal. So after the other cause thrombocytopenia, then gestation thrombocyte diagnosed, and only this is uh, uh, for the patient to reassure, there's nothing to be done for her. And right away after delivery, we see the increase in the platelet count. Other conditions of pregnancy, preeclampsia, and HELP syndrome are other, other causes of thrombocytopenia. And of course, if you have bone marrow problem, for example, uh, 
myelodysplasia, any cancer that can infiltrate, infiltrate into the bone marrow. If we have any uh, uh, condition that causes peripheral destruction, like th uh, thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura, hyperinduced thrombocytopenia, so the list goes on and on and on. So, um, so this is a picture of uh, platelet counts. This is how they look under the microscope in patients with thrombocytopenia. And this is another picture where we have high MPV because they have, these are large platelets, the ones here. These are large platelets. If you notice the, uh, the approach the size of the uh, red cell, so this is what we call high patients coming with high MPP because of preferred destruction. So one is uh, indicated to uh, refer the patient to a hematologist for thrombocytopenia. Just confirm it is a new diagnosis. In patient with long term thrombocytopenia, maybe it is less urgent to send the patient to us. And try to uh, determine the cause of uh, uh, unexpected thrombocytopenia. For example, if it was like B12 folate deficiency, it can be corrected and th thrombocytopenia automatically will be corrected. So the urgency depends on the presentation of the patient. Patient come, for example, with bleeding, patient with coming with severe thrombocytopenia in the time 50, then this is more urgent to send to the hospital. Thrombocytosis two causes of thrombocytosis, general causes. Either it is secondary, and this, these are the bulk of the patient that we see, or the primary, which is a bone marrow problem, like in myeloproliferative disorders. So what are the causes of a reactive thrombocytosis? If we have a non-malignant condition, like if we have acute iron, defi iron deficiency anemia, um, uh, treatment in B12 uh, deficiency. Any malignant condition like cancer can give you reactive thrombocytosis. Inflammation, infection, patient with active connective tissue diseases, um, uh, patient uh, taking some medications uh, like uh, uh, thrombocytic agonists that, that are stimulatory drugs to the bone marrow. All of this can give you reactive thrombocytosis. So in most of patient reactive thrombocytosis, you don't have to worry about them. Some, most of them are benign. So when it is appropriate to refer to hematologist, uh, um, if secondary causes of thrombocytopenia are ruled out, so what we can, you can do from your side to uh, confirm it is uh, reactive thrombocytosis? Send for 14 level to confirm it is iron deficiency anemia. Uh, send for ESR and CRP. It will tell you that there's element of inflammation or infection with the patient. And take a history of the patient. If patients having a splenectomy, uh, they would have reactive thrombocytosis. Or even patients like uh, sickle cell disease where they have autosplenectomy, they would have reactive thrombocytosis. So it's not something to worry about. Okay, leukocytosis, uh, most patients uh, are referred to us because of leukocytosis, but most of them are benign conditions. Um, but if you think the patient has unexplained leukocytosis, then you can send them to the hospital. So we have lots of cases of thrombocytosis. It goes by the differential neutrophilia. Uh, neutrophilia, when we talk neutrophilia, usually we are talking like bacterial infections, viral infections, and remember that also cigarette smokers, they can have, smokers, they can have an element of uh, neutrophilia as well. Monocytosis, mostly you can see them with the viral infection. Other conditions like tuberculosis, sarcoidosis, or connective tissue disease, they can have uh, lymphocytosis as well. Eosinophilia, mostly related to the atopic uh, conditions like allergic rhinitis, uh, uh, asthma, uh, some patients with immune deficiency. Lymphocytes as well goes with the viral infectious most, and we have the primary uh, causes, especially if an elderly presenting with persistent lymphocytes and have an other, an, any underlying cause, you rule out an infection. So this is where you think like uh, uh, conditions like uh, chronic lymphocytic leukemia. Okay, uh, leukopenia is defined as total white cell count. It's less than two uh, standard deviation from the mean. 
and you have to check the uh, previous CBC count. So maybe it is an old problem because some patients will come what we call like ethnic neutropenia, especially in Yemenis, um, uh, Egyptian population, where they always have a low neutrophil count, not cause any problem, no infection. So check the previous uh, 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 CBC count and take a history to indicate the patient's more prone to infection or not. So uh, these are lists of acquired uh, leukopenia in general, autoimmune conditions, uh, uh, viral infections, bacterial infection can cause leukopenia, uh, fungal, some drugs can cause um, immune deficiency state, uh, nutrition like B12 and folate deficiency. So uh, this is 31-year-old Jordanian woman. She doesn't have any current medical illness, and she's a factor of leukopenia. Uh, she's been having neutropenia since childhood, and she has been evaluated by bone marrow biopsy in the past, and uh, it is a normal bone uh, marrow. She denies any frequent infection, but she had a recent upper spot infection with fever 38.3, and she was uh, treated with um, antibiotics. The patient doesn't, doesn't know any of her family members to have any low counts or infections. And physical examination are remarkable. You do the lab test and WC count is 2, or ANC is 1.2, peripheral smear is normal except for decreased neutrophils. Uh, so this uh, patient demonstrates a case of neutropenia, and she is a case of what we call ethnic neutropenia. So what is the definition of neutropenia? Any neutrophil count less than 1.5 in absolute in adults. Uh, and it is uh, calculated as white blood cell count total multiplied by percentage of uh, neutrophils. Uh, so we can uh, differentiate neutropenia as having several degrees. Mild neutropenia is between 1 to 1.5 or 1,000 to 1. 1,500, moderate between 1,000 to uh, 500, and severe less than 500. Um, okay. So these are some of the causes of uh, neutropenia um, uh, acquired related to the uh, drugs. Anticonvulsants can cause uh, acquired neutropenia. Uh, as I said, uh, benign, there are some entities what we call cyclic neutropenia, where the patient having uh, every three weeks they have a drop in the neutrophil count, and again it goes back again. Uh, uh, maybe not too normal, and they can manifest uh, uh, manifestation of infection. Some of them, they don't have an infection. Patient coming with uh, active uh, connective tissue disease, uh, Felty syndrome, where there's increase in spleen patient with rheumatoid arthritis and the neutrophils get sequestered into the spleen. Infections like viral uh, and part of the uh, pancytopenia if you have a bone marrow problem. So when you should send patient for uh, to hematologist? Uh, for uh, most patients associated with neutropenia, we should check for nutritional uh, problems uh, at first. Or patient take a history if patient had like connective tissue diseases or vascular diseases. Uh, and uh, one trick can be done by you if it is just mild neutropenia. Refer to us if you think there's patient with mild to moderate uh, neutropenia and they don't have any clear, clear reason for a patient neutropenia, the patient needs to uh, be uh, worked up. If the patient develops like a repeated uh, infection or patient has other cytopenias other than uh, the uh, uh, neutropenia. So we should be worried about this. And if patients have any organomegaly or lymphadenopathy by clinical examination, this is when you should refer the patient to us. Okay. All right.